So, you got Disney Plus. You got Hulu. Why not put them together? They're all owned by Disney. So, long-awaited development here. Hulu will now be available on Disney Plus um, after a three-month beta um, with people kind of trying out the, the, the functionality. So this would be an additional subscription, right? If you already have a Hulu subscription, use the same email. I think it's automatically going to connect. Um, and if not, if you use different emails, then I think there's still a way to connect to them. You just have to sign in or whatever. Um, but this is not just like a bundle where it's like, oh, you pay this price and then you can sign into the Disney Plus app and sign into the Hulu app. They will still be separate apps, but now there will be a Hulu tile on Disney Plus's homepage where where there's like, you know, Disney, uh, Star Wars and Marvel and Pixar, whatever all the different tiles are. There will now be one for Hulu. Um, it will, you know, um, what do I have here? So if you look at this picture here, so the logo for the Disney Plus logo has now been updated to like a teal-ish color, kind of showing like that combination of like the Disney Plus blue and the Hulu like bright green. Um, so this is now going to mean that Hulu content, nearly all of the content available on your, with your Hulu subscription will now be available through the Disney plus app. Um, obviously there's, there's some exceptions um, due to like licensing reasons and, um, you know, it's not going to have Hulu plus live TV, which is like their, exactly what it sounds like their live TV, uh, functionality on Hulu. It's not going to have that. Um, but besides that, it's going to, you know, like what you would want from Hulu or what you go to Hulu for, you're going to now be able to access that through Disney plus, um, which creates some interesting issues here because, you know, Disney obviously has a certain brand and image, right? Being very family friendly. And there's plenty of stuff on Hulu, both licensed stuff as well as original Hulu content that is at the very least, like, meant for maybe an older audience, if not full-on, like, it's TVMA, or it's, like, adult content, right? Um, so, there will be a focus on Disney Plus having parental controls, and they're encouraging users to create, uh, they're, they're encouraging subscribers to create multiple users, right? So, you have, like, Dad's profile and, and, and Little Jimmy's profile, right? Um, to really try to make Disney Plus a hub for the whole family, um, which they've been struggling with because Disney, you know, b because Disney, at least like forget all of their acquisitions. If you just look at Disney, their output is not going to be the same as like historically as like a Warner Brothers, as a Paramount, uh, just because for the first like, you know, eight, you know, 50 years, they were really specialized. So they would make some live action stuff here and there, but you know. If they were only making animated films, it would maybe be like, it take a year in between each one. That might only be like one or three movies you're releasing in the year. Whereas like these other studios are going to release like dozens and dozens of movies throughout the year, right? So Disney, it was always a hard sell, even with their acquisitions of Marvel and Lucasfilm and Pixar and all. And, you know, there was always concern how much content could a Disney-only streaming service have. And that's why Disney Plus is also, I believe, at least it was... Um, much cheaper than than the other services. Um, their acquisition of Fox, theoretically, that, that was like a primary reason that they acquired Fox was to get like that large library of content. But they haven't leveraged it in the ways you would think. Because um, again, that's Fox had, 20th Century Fox had a hundred years of content. But it was not all on Disney+. Plus. Some of it was on Disney+, Plus. some of it was on Hulu, and then some of it was nowhere. So you would think, like, why are you sitting on this treasure trove, right? Um, so, you know, now it seems to be they're really trying to make Disney Plus. Obviously, it still wants to keep that Disney branding, but they're understanding you need to have a lot of content, right? Um, you know, Disney Disney has a, the blessing and the curse of, 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 of the limited amount of content. But what is there is so important to people. You know, a family isn't going to get rid of their... Disney Plus subscription, right? Um, just because, like, their kids would freak out if they can't watch Moana, right? But, you know, for what about everyone else, right? So so Disney's strategy here is, is the way I see it, twofold, right? Um, it hopes to use this integration to upsell current subscribers, right? So if you're a Disney Plus subscriber and you don't have Hulu, you know, these content tiles are going to be there 
along with everything that you that you can watch, right? So you might have Toy Story and then The Bear, which is a show, an FX show that's on Hulu, right next to each other. And I, from my understanding, I don't think it'll be like that. The The Bear that tile is going to be great or anything. It's going to just be there. So then you click on it, and then you find out once you click on it, you've already kind of gotten interested in it that you actually have to upgrade, right? So I think they're hoping that this will convince a, a lot of people to up up you know upgrade their subscription. Um, and this was something kind of similar with when Disney Plus first launched because they had a lot of licensing deals with places like Netflix and Prime Video. So for the longest time on Disney Plus, sometimes you would go and see a movie like, oh, I want to watch this movie. You click on it and then it would be like not available for like 15 months from now, right? Um, so this kind of feels like a similar thing where it's like they want you to get excited about it, click on it, initially get annoyed you can't watch it, but then be like, oh wait, I can watch it if I just pay an extra $2 or whatever. Uh, so that's one kind of strategy. Um, and then the other strategy is to drive uh, engagement up with current subscribers, right? Um, so a lot of people who might have Disney Plus and Hulu um, may not know what they have access to, right? And uh, Variety notes that, you know, higher engagement correlates with lower cancellation rates, right? So Disney really wants to make sure that you that people know, hey, you can watch this thing. It normally wouldn't be available with Disney Plus, but since you have Hulu, you can watch it. And the more things that people find that they that they have the ability to watch, um, they're just they're just going to be less likely to cancel, right? Um, that's the that's a big issue with some of these services is, is the churn, right? Like how many people are leaving, not just how many people are we getting. Um, but again, both apps will still be standalone. Um, if you if you want it that way, um, it's going to be. But if you do this, like, uh, again, it's not quite a bundle. It's, like, literally, like, you you are going to be using Hulu through the Disney Plus app. Um, with ads, it will, it'll be about $9.99 a month compared to just $7.99 a month for Disney Plus with ads. Um, and then without ads, it'll be $19.99 a month compared to Disney Plus's ad-free version, which is at $13.99, right? Um, so it it's definitely a good deal if you have that ad-supported version for just two extra dollars you get all of the hulu stuff um and we have a quote here from joe early um he was probably always early to things uh joe Ear that was awful i'm sorry joe early who's the president of direct to uh, consumer for disney entertainment said quote disney plus th this feels almost more like a voiceover for an ad so he says here quote disney plus and hulu are better together and they're available for one unbelievable price end quote um, and, and I'm, you know, I'm always usually skeptical and cynical about corporate decisions and maneuvering, but I gotta say, this actually kind of feels like a win-win for everybody, right? This is a win for Disney for the reasons I said before, because they could potentially capture, you know, um, you know, it's a chance to potentially capture some Hulu subscriptions, right? And get people who don't already have Hulu on the bandwagon. Cause that's been a big problem with streaming is like, it's kind of plateauing. Like a lot of people who have streaming have it. You know what I mean? Like the people who are going to get it have it already, right? So this is kind of being able to kind of eke out any additional people, right? Um, but I think it's a win actually for consumers as well because I've talked about this channel many, many times how not only convoluted but unnecessarily so, um, unnecessarily convoluted streaming has become for consumers where you have like 12 different apps and you got to remember all your passwords for all the things and you got to, they're all different apps and because you, most of these smart TVs, they run on really shitty OS, it takes like forever to go between apps. It's this whole thing. People want to have a one-stop shop, right? And this adds one less barrier to entry, right? You know, you can have, it's only these two apps, but you can uh, have both of those experiences in one app. So you don't have to be constantly hitting your home button on your remote and going to a Hulu app and what, what have you. Um, and I would imagine, I think I read this, but it's not confirmed, but I would assume that the, the plan is also to eventually integrate ESPN stuff right because espn plus is its own app i'm sure if this is successful they're going to try to integrate that as well so with for an extra again two or three dollars on top of this you could watch espn through disney plus right again the more that you can just have a one-stop shop for people um is going to be really really important um the only thing that i dis would disagree with is um is i, I feel like i would flip it again I, th instead of, instead of watching Hulu through Disney Plus, I feel like you should watch Hulu, you should watch Disney content through Hulu, um, because Hulu has just been around longer, people I think who don't give a shit about Disney, like there's more of like a, a broad 
appeal to Hulu. Whereas you're, you kind of have the uphill battle here of like trying to get convince people that Disney, oh, there's actually stuff for you adults, as opposed to the reverse where it's like, oh, Hulu is for adults. Oh, but we, we can also add stuff. So now it's for the whole family, right? I feel that's an easier sell personally. Um, but I mean, I'm not really the target demographic because I already have, we already have all of this, right? Um, we have a comment here from Jacob Boblet saying, at least the decision gets Hulu content off the broken Hulu app. Yes, thank you, Jacob, because I don't know if it's maybe Fire, we have a Fire TV. I don't know if it's Fire TV specific, but the Hulu, all these apps suck. They all suck. That's the biggest problem. The only app that works well is Netflix and it's because they've been at it for years. Um, Prime Video works pretty well, but since it's tied very much into the Fire OS on our TV, um, you know, it's a little bit slower than I would like, but Hulu especially sucks so much. And, you know, I constantly have this problem where like, I can't pause anything. It'll physically, like the the image will pause, but the audio will keep going. And then if I hit pause again to unpause it, the video will keep going, but now the audio stops. So like the only way I can pause anything on Hulu is literally to exit out of the, not of the app, but like hit the back button to go back to like the, the Hulu menu. So it's just a pain in the ass. So yeah, Disney Plus is a little bit better. Um, It's pretty slow, but at least it's functional. Like it doesn't have, it's not broken in that way. Um, so you're exactly right, Jacob, but it's it, the least, the less apps I have to go to, the better, you know, 